Hello my friends and welcome to another sub through that. Hello everyone, we're breaking records today and not just any record but one that is gonna cost me literally all of my sanity. So you might have seen these videos floating around YouTube, but recently I saw an incredible video by Whale Lol where he builds the tallest base in Subnautica history. A video you should definitely check out, by the way. And that got me thinking, if that is the tallest base, what is the biggest base that has ever been built in Subnautica history? Looking back on YouTube, two years ago, Pab posted the base that takes you all the way from the lava zone to the surface in Subnautica, which is honestly quite insane. And again, Waylol also posted the video which leads pretty much from the Aurora all the way down to the lava zones, yet again. And both of these are super impressive to me, but I wanted more. I wanted to take the record for what is either the biggest or at least the longest base ever, and so an idea was born. Today we'll be building a base through every single biome in Subnautica. It will be one more or less connected structure that will touch every single biome in the game, and it will literally take me hours and hours and hours to do, so let's just get to it. Now, before we go anywhere, let's first establish what will be the list of biomes that we'll be building in. See, this is very important to discuss because Subnautica has many different definitions for what a biome is, and you can easily get into some weird technicalities where, for example, the observatory is technically a biome. Now, to make this simple, I went onto the wiki and I essentially decided to do all of the main biomes that are listed under the surface biomes category, both of the islands, and when it came to the cave biomes, I decided to do every one that isn't already covered in a different biome. So, for example, the lava zone is very clearly its own cave biome, however, something like the dune caves is already covered in the dunes biome, so I wouldn't be doing them separately. Also, I will not be doing the mini biomes such as the lava geyser because Honestly, who cares? So, with the plan laid out, it was time to sit down, launch a creative, yes, of course, creative, Subnautica world, and just get started. Now, my first plan of action was to go through all of the biomes I would be trying to build to and place down beacons. My idea of this challenge would be to build an observatory in every single one of the listed biomes, so at the start, I decided to just teleport around the map build these observatories and place beacons under them. Now, to say that I severely underestimated how many biomes there actually are would be a massive understatement, because there are many. But uh, just to list it off, we have the <gasps> Blood Kelp Zone, Bulb Zone, Crag Field, Crash Zone, Crater Edge, Dunes, Grand Reef, Grassy Plateaus, Kelp Forest, Mountain, Mushroom Forest, Safe Shallows, Sea Treaders Path, Sparse Reef, Underwater Islands, Floating Island, Mountain Island, Deep Grand Reef, Inactive Lava Zone, Jelly Shroom Cave, Lava Lakes, and the Lost River. This is a lot. <laughs> just placing down the beacons took me about 40 minutes with all the teleportation around, which was not a good sign, given how long this thing would take. Now, of course, these were not going to be the final locations of these observatories, just more of a reference. And also when building, I always try to get relatively close to the original observatory placement with the placement of the final one. Now, looking around the map kind of now gives you an idea of how many different biomes there are. And the more I thought about it in the moment, the more it made me want to not attempt this at all. But nevertheless, I pushed through and decided to get started, just to gauge how difficult this would be. Now, the place I decided to start at was the crash zone, and I decided to build all the way down to the void. My initial thinking was that I could kind of do a ring around the left side of the map, and then eventually circle down the right side into the lava zones. Now, my main tool would of course be the habitat builder, and the main building block I would be using was the glass compartment. This is just because I think they look nice, a bit nicer than the full regular compartments, and also because they are a relatively long block that is also very quick to build. The initial distance was just around 900 meters, which, you know, didn't seem that difficult to me, but I was very wrong. See, it took me a while to find a good strategy for building the blocks. Moving sideways eventually turned out to be the easiest way, but even with that, once you start building in one direction, Subnautica pretty much just lets you build in a cross-shaped grid, so at many occasions I would have to just build left and right in a zigzag pattern as opposed to being able to go diagonally. I would be using the vertical connectors to connect base pieces that needed to go up or down, and with this, you know, I started progressing pretty okay. It took a while, but eventually I reached the void and at this point I encountered one of my first problems. 
the massive lag. What you're seeing on video right now is not a problem with the recording software. This is actually how I saw the game. Every time I would build a base compartment, the game would lag out sometimes for up to 5 seconds before completing the build. Now this was a massive problem, because it was slowing down the already slow process of building this massive snake-like base. Nevertheless, I pushed through and before long connected to the observatory in the void. With the first connection out of the way, you can get a little bit of sense of what the journey there was like. I decided to call it for the day and the next day resume building from there. My next target became the bulb zone and luckily this one wasn't too far away, so I was just able to continue the build normally. The lag was still horrible and I felt like it was getting worse and worse with every base piece. At this point I had set my settings all the way to the lowest possible configuration, but it really didn't seem to do much when it came to this strange problem with building. Nevertheless, before long I had connected down to the bulb zone. From the bulb zone I reached the mountains, and this honestly drained just about all of my energy that I had, so I decided to take a small break and instead go to the safe shallows and start building from there. Something I noticed straight away was that when I built here, the strange lag was not happening, at least not at the start. This would eventually give me an idea of how to resolve this, but for now it simply made the building process easier. I built my way into a kelp forest without any major complications, I was actually able to build on the surface for a lot of the time or at least above water. From there I made it to the grassy plateaus, and then the first challenge would come, and that is the Jelly Shroom Caves. I wanted to get it while I was in the grassy plateaus since it happens to just have the entrance there, but what I didn't anticipate is just how narrow the entrance is. Now let me tell you, I wasted a lot of time here more than I care to admit. My process was basically trying to build down into the cave and then build back up, but the grid system on which Subnautica lets you build bases was just not flexible enough to where I would be able to do this even with the smallest base pieces. As unfortunate as it was, at some point I simply had to admit defeat and try a different entrance into the Jelly Shroom Caves. That one was simply not gonna work out. Luckily the new entrance I found was much larger and proved to be much easier to build with. So before long we had the observatory in the Jelly Shroom Caves. Now I then returned to the grassy plateaus and actually built my way towards the dunes. Not a complicated build, but quite far in a straight line. You can kind of get an idea of how far it went in some of these shots. I do also want to point out that if at some points you don't see the entire base it's just because my settings were all the way down, so it's never really rendering more than like 15 pieces every direction, but you'll see some cinematic shots at the end which kind of show the scale of this thing. What you also probably already noticed at this point is the game is moving very fast and that's because I had set the game speed to be usually between 3 and 5 times normal. This was simply to make the process of building faster because this was already taking forever. Building from the dunes became incredibly annoying after a while, so I decided to again take a break and start building out from the floating islands because at least the area looks nice. So I did it, made my way all the way down to the mushroom forest and then a massive problem came. And and this was a big one. Remember when I mentioned that four directional grid in Subnautica? Well, this does not apply when you start building with free rotating buildings, such as the observatory, which can be placed at basically any height or orientation around the world. Now the problem was, I already had a build in the mushroom forest, and then I started another one in the floating islands. Problem was, when they met, they couldn't actually physically connect because they were at slightly different heights and slightly different orientations. And this is infuriating, because I had just spent over half an hour building my way over to this place and now the base pieces are literally meters away from one another and cannot connect together. Now in some of the other base builds I saw on YouTube, the way they get around this is essentially just putting them as close together as possible and then placing down hatches, but this didn't really feel right since even if the bases couldn't connect physically, I wanted them to at least look connected as much as possible. Luckily then, a random stroke of genius came, and I found a way that is pretty much as good as it gets. If you actually build a moon pool, you can build from the bottom up into it using vertical connectors, which while technically not connected, gets you pretty much about as close as you could physically get. And the amazing thing is, it also eliminates the problem of lag. See, for some reason, when a base just gets too long in Subnautica, the game will start lagging out, but if you interrupt this base, 
With a Moonpool connection like this, all of the lag is gone, and this would be a massive game changer going forward. Either way, with the mushroom first done, I built my way from the floating islands over to the mountain island. Nothing particularly exciting there, but it was pretty fun to build the ending all the way up onto the surface. And then I returned back to the grassy plateaus, and having essentially covered the entirety of one side of the map, I decided to finally start building towards the other half. Going down into the blood kill zone actually wasn't that difficult at all. Now that I knew the trick with the moon pool, which allowed me to reorient and also remove lag, I was able to pretty easily navigate the cave system and get stuff hooked up. Now at this point I realized I was pretty close to the entrance to the Lost River, but instead of continuing down there, I figured it might be a better idea to cover all of the surface biomes and leave the trek down to the lava zone as the final thing. And so that's exactly what I did. I swam all the way back up, I swam over to the island, and started building out from there since it was kind of in the center of many of the biomes I would need to reach on the right side of the map. First I built my way down to the sparse reef, this was a pretty uneventful build and nothing really went wrong. And then I made my way over to the Grand Reef. And while I'm explaining this, I just want you all to understand that while here in the voiceover, I'm able to just say, yeah, I made my way over to this biome and this biome. In reality, we're talking minutes and sometimes hours between these individual cuts with me trying to either figure stuff out or just getting stuck on things. So it really was a grueling process that made me rethink everything I know and love about this game. From there, I went to the Sea Treader's Path. Now, yes, it could be argued that this isn't a real biome since it's basically just a part of the Grand Reef, but it was listed among the surface biomes, so I figured why the heck not, I was already pretty close to it anyway. From the Grand Reef, I decided to go to the Deep Grand Reef, again it could be argued that this is technically a part of the Grand Reef, but to me the area feels distinct enough to where it warrants its own observatory, and also luckily the cave entrance is pretty big, so it wasn't really that difficult to get down there. From there I decided to take the long straight to the Crag Field, and that was pretty much all of the surface biomes. I then quickly circled back and connected all of the remaining parts of the surface biomes that were built but technically not connected together. And then at last, it was time for the final trip down. This would be longer than I thought in my head, in my head I was basically done at this point, but it would still be around like two and a half hours at this point till I finished. But the process was relatively straightforward. I returned back to the Blood Kelp Zone and started building into the Lost River from there. And the annoying thing about the Blood Kelp Zone is that it is quite a narrow biome, which led to a whole bunch of zigzag patterns, more than I care to admit. But before long, I finally we saw the first green squares of the Lost River, which actually made me feel pretty motivated to finally be done with this. I continued building my way down, said hi to the Ghost Leviathan, went past the skull and in between their ribs, which was actually a pretty cool thread the needle moment. Of course, I connected to the observatory there and continued making my way down past the ghost tree, which was kind of fun to build over. And before long, well, okay, it took quite a while, but before too long, I was down in the lava corridor. I could practically smell the end by now, but these were some of the trickiest areas to navigate. Again, this biome is very narrow, and even with the trick of realigning using the moon pool, it still took quite a few zigzag patterns to make it all the way to the inactive lava zone, which I promptly did and connected to the observatory there. And that was basically it. From there, I built down using the large crater-like entrance into the lava lakes, built my way past the lava, decided to do one more moon pool realignment, had the game crash on me while saving, and lost about 20 minutes of progress, which definitely did not make me upset in any way whatsoever. And then, finally, the last base pieces were placed in the lava lakes, the observatory was placed, and that was it. My friends, we have just built a base that connects all biomes in Subnautica. Now before you enjoy the nice cinematic shots and my kind of closing sentiments on this, why don't you enjoy this quick one with some relaxing music that shows you just a portion of this that leads out kind of onto the surface and towards the floating island from the lava zone. But anyways guys, that is the base. Now, would I recommend anybody try this? Absolutely not. Uh, it is 
Subnautica is really not made to withstand bases this big, so unless you have an absolute NASA computer, I really wouldn't recommend this. Plus, even the process with the fact that I was in creative and I was running the world at like three times the speed still took over eight hours to complete of doing nothing but building base compartments one after the other after the other, which is really mind-numbing and honestly, I don't know why I decided to do this at all. But I sincerely hope you guys enjoy. Now, what I'm considering doing, and I probably will eventually, is I'll take a break from base building for a little bit, but then I might actually clean up this build and I might put it up on the Nexus if you guys want so that you can mess around and explore the base that connects all of the biomes. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but if there is some interest, let me know down in the comments below and I might just do that. Now, as a closing remark, it is worth noting that yes, I had to do the moon pool of realignment trick a few times to prevent the lag. If somebody manages to do this without any trick like that, I will be really blown away. I don't recommend anybody try, but anyways, I really hope you guys enjoyed me suffering here for a while. And if you did, maybe consider leaving a like, commenting, or subscribing. All of those would be very much appreciated. If you have any other crazy challenge ideas, please leave them down in the comments below. And with that, I'm gonna wish you a beautiful rest of today, and I'll see you in whatever next video I make. Bye-bye.